Novel Short Flexible Ureteroscope Evaluation of the Carl Storz Short Flex X2 for Percutaneous Nephrolithotomy in Setting of Infundibular Stenosis. Flexible ureteroscopes have revolutionized stone treatment, most notably with retrograde treatment of proximal ureteral and renal stones. An important criticism of the flexible ureteroscope in the setting of PCNL has been the redundant external length of the scope, which can be awkward for manipulation. In this video, we will demonstrate application of a 7.5 French short flex X2 ureteroscope to treat a partial staghorn calculus associated with infundibular stenosis. This scope has a single active deflection point. It also can fully deflect 270 degrees both upwards and downwards. In contrast, the typical flexible cystoscope or nephroscope deflects only upwards 180 to 220 and downwards only 80 to 180. Also, unlike the flexible nephroscope, the short flex X ureteroscope is able to access most of the ureter. Shown is the short flexible ureteroscope side by side with the flexible nephroscope and the standard ureteroscope. We present the case of a 69 year old female with history of right renal lithiasis that was diagnosed 15 years prior without treatment, now with recurrent urinary tract infections. She was referred by an outside provider for treatment of a 25 millimeter stone. She had a renal scan which demonstrated 28% function on the right side, and a PCNL was recommended. The patient was taken to the OR for right PCNL. We first evaluated the system with retrograde pilogram and ureteroscopy. Percutaneous access to the lower pole was obtained with a triangulation technique followed by balloon dilation. The lower pole was selected to avoid an intercostal approach and avoid pleural injury. Nephroscopy confirmed infundibular stenosis of both upper and lower pole calyces and an impacted partial staghorn calculus. After starting with the rigid nephroscope, attempt was made to use the flexible nephroscope. Even with balloon infundibulotomy, the flexible nephroscope was not able to reach the upper calyceal stone. We start by showing the view with the flexible nephroscope. Here you see the narrowed infundibulum. The cystoscope is not able to reach it, despite the infundibulotomy. We then switch to the short flexible ureteroscope. And the stone is visualized. We insert a 200 micron laser fiber and then proceed to break up the stone. We then insert a standard ureteroscopic basket and proceed to grasp the stone fragments and remove them. As you can see, the short flexible ureteroscope is easily able to access the calyx, which is unable to be reached by the nephroscope. Once the stone was adequately treated, we then terminated the procedure and placed a nephrostomy tube. 
When the short, flexible uteroscope was then inserted, we were able to access and adequately treat this stone. The ureter was also evaluated, and we were able to nearly reach the bladder in an integrated approach. The short, flexible uteroscope has potential to be advantageous for percutaneous nephrolithotomy. The stones are in a narrow infundibulum, a difficult to access calyx, or calyx sealed diverticulum. There is improved ergonomics of manipulation relative to standard length uteroscopes. The improved deflection relative to flexible cystoscopes could reduce renal trauma. Such a scope may also benefit pediatric populations. Disadvantages include the uteroscope remains a more delicate instrument than the flexible nephroscope for PCNL. And a great treatment of stones at the uterovesical junction may necessitate change to a traditional uteroscope. The current scope evaluated did not have digital optical capabilities, and there would be expense from additional equipment. In conclusion, our group has found the short flexible uteroscope to be useful in a variety of cases. In this described case of infundibular stenosis, the short uteroscope had a decisive role in the success of treatment. The short flexible uteroscope is likely most suited to an adjunct role for unique circumstances rather than to be used as a routine scope.